Hey there, I'm Scott the Winemaking Guy and I'd like to welcome you to episode 2 of Help My Winemaking which is the video podcast that helps people like you improve your winemaking savvy so you can make great tasting homemade wine. On today's show, we're going to talk about a tasty Spanish wine I invite you to try. I'm going to let you know about a cool iPhone application for all you wine geeks out there. I'm going to talk about the dangers of bulk aging as well. So let's get to it. Well, It was my wife Michelle's birthday a few weeks ago, and I took her to a fine dining restaurant for her birthday, and the wine that was recommended was a Spanish wine called Gilbenzu Evo 2005. Gilbenzu being the winery, and Evo, of course, being the wine itself. Evo is a blend between 70% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Tempranillo, and 10% Merlot, and it's aged for 12 months in French oak. Now... It costs us about $50 at the restaurant, so I'm guessing about $20 to $30 at your local local uh, wine supply merchant. Now, in terms of food pairing, I had it with a filet mignon, and uh, Michelle had it with a lobster tail, and it was fantastic with both. Now, the color is a deep red. The aroma is plums, cherries, and a hint of allspice, and it was very smooth with a full-bodied, rich taste. We kind of fought over <laughs> who got the end of it, but since it was her birthday, I certainly let her have it. Now this segues nicely into our next topic, which is a wine application for your iPhone for all you iPhone users out there. Uh, I, since we had this wine, I was trying to think of how I could record it. Obviously, I could t- write down the name of the wine on a napkin, but you know those get lost. So I was hunting on my iPhone for a cool application, and I found one, and it's called WinePad 2. And I like it because now I can keep track of all the wines I like and I don't like whenever I'm at a, a restaurant or a wine tasting and uh, it allows you to take pictures of the label includes tasting notes and it cost a dollar or two it wasn't very expensive so you can certainly find uh, this application in iTunes if you'd like or you can google it the website that I found it at was aptism.com slash apps slash wine hyphen pad hyphen two so definitely something to look at now let's talk about our winemaking tip this week, which is talking about the dangers of bulk aging. Now, by bulk aging, I mean aging your wine in the carboy versus uh, aging your wine in the bottle. And the theory behind bulk aging is that uh, since your wine is being aged together in the batch, it's going to be consistent across um, the entire batch versus in the bottle, which uh, could be variations between bottles. So, let's start with a quick history lesson. Back in the day, um, you there was no way to really store your wine or age it without getting your wine oxidized so most people actually drank their wine before the next harvest this meant that they couldn't really tell the differences between the wine uh, be- between each harvest and that changed of course with the invention of the glass wine bottle and the cork oops went the wrong way there okay so also interesting to know that most commercial wineries will actually of course age their wine depending on the style of wine in an oak barrel for a year or so uh, but most of the aging will actually happen in the bottle now cheaper wine is stored in tanks and then uh, bottled as needed uh, and I've also heard that some higher-end wineries are experimenting by aging their wines in small batches in six gallon carboys to see if that makes a difference as well so that's interesting now you might recall from last week's uh, podcast I did a, a survey this week to see what other people did with their wine and here's the results I asked how do you age your wine interesting to find most people aged in bottles versus the carboy and here are some comments Mark Mada says I bottle my wine as soon as it's ready three to four months from beginning to end what we don't drink we give away I haven't been able to age any wine because it isn't around long enough to get old so Mark is definitely a good guy to know because he uh, likes to share his wine, which is very nice. So thanks, Mark. John L. Smith from Burlington, Ontario. He says, I can control the resulting wine better in a carboy, and when I'm totally pleased with every aspect of my wine, then I bottle it. So he's a carboy guy. Thank you, John. Andy Markman from St. Anne, Manitoba says, Generally, I like to bulk age for one to three months, then bottle. Of course, the danger is if something happens to the wine in the carboy, then 30 bottles are ruined. Hasn't happened yet. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Annie. And the pirate who 
is from Gulfport, Florida, also known as Bobster. He works at a winemaking store in just outside of St. Petersburg. And he says, in my way of thinking, many things can go wrong in bulk aging. In the bottle, I know it's safe, as long as I don't drink it. He also notes that some of the things that he worries about when aging in the carboy is just people or pets knocking the uh, airlock off as well as when water evaporates from the carboy sometimes it has a tendency to push the airlock out so certainly uh, keep an eye out for that so thanks pirate i also asked how long do you typically age your wine and uh, i was really uh, encouraged to find that most people age it three months to a year so that means they're taking the time to enjoy it and I agree with you 100%. Now Dr. Frank Puzio who's an eye doctor in Yarmouth Port, Massachusetts which is on Cape Cod says after one year in oak I siphon to six gallon carboys and only bottle as I need wine. Wine and carboy age more uniformly and is less likely to have fluctuations from temperature issues. I also save on the costs of bottles and only have to deal with 30 bottles at one time for bottling. And I and I kind of agree with Dr. Frank here because we have a space issue in our house. Unfortunately, we don't have a large area for a wine cellar. So that's why we don't bottle all of our wine as well. Um, we actually have hundreds of bottles of wine in carboys waiting to be bottled and uh, so we can't do it right now although I am making uh, hopefully tomorrow going to be building a wine rack where we'll be able to uh, store some of our wine so thanks everyone for all of your comments certainly appreciated now is bulk caging really dangerous well it's, it isn't but you need to be smart about it and here's some things to consider one is the bung from the airlock is a cone shape for and the space that you stick it in the neck of the carboy is a cylinder. So what that means is when you put the bung into your carboy, you actually only have about a millimeter of, of space that protects your wine from the outside. And also, um, the uh, because the, the bung is made out of rubber, it is gas permeable, so air can definitely get into your carboy. So some things to do to increase your level of success and reduce your chance of oxidation are as follows. One is keep your, the neck of your carboy filled. So that means you want to make sure your wine, um, in your carboy is within about an inch of the bung. This reduces the surface area open to oxidation. You obviously want to keep your airlock filled with either sterile water or a metabisulfite solution. I personally use metabisulfite solution. And also if you see any uh, fruit flies in there, you'll want to make sure you toss your, your sulfite solution and clean it out because those bugs are rather dirty and can ruin your batch of wine. I'll be discussing that further in another video podcast. You'll also want to store your, your carboy in a cool dark space as with your bottles if you do that and free of vibrations. You'll also want to monitor your sulfite levels in your wine and you can test that by using a sulfite testing kit which you can get at your local wine making supply store and you'll obviously want to make sure that your airlock remains on and it could be bumped off by any number of things as mentioned by the pirate. So if you have any tips or comments about today's show, I invite you to share them either on the uh, blog in the comments area below the video if you're on my blog, or you can email me at tips at helpmywinemaking.com. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the sweet time does fly. Um, and hopefully you learned something new. Now, if you're interested in getting more winemaking tips, I invite you to find me on Twitter, uh, my my username is winemaking guy, so twitter.com slash winemaking guy. You can also find me on Facebook. My page is there, uh, fbook.me slash winemaking guy. And you can also get more winemaking tips on my blog, which is thewinemakingguy.com. I do have a free five part winemaking course there if you'd like. And finally, you can subscribe to this podcast via iTunes. Now, join me next week where I'll be discussing using magnets to improve the taste of your wine and if that works as well as I have a great tip from the pirate for lining up your wine labels after you, after you bottle your wine. So thanks again for being here this week. See you next week. Hope you have a great one. Bye for now.